boards and I hope that you understand my sort of, I guess you could see it as being picky with the definitions of these algebraic expressions, is really um, what we have learned as math educators over 35 years of, at least I've been here 35 years, but what we've learned at each of us as a department for what is really critical to taking these really abstract expressions, look at this, 20 plus 0 0.05x, that's an abstraction. What does that mean? And most of us can probably get away with saying things like cost of the monthly plan. But it's the cost of the monthly plan, and there's another little piece, for X messages. If we knew what X was, boom, we'd plug it in and out would come this beautiful number, right? Well, not so beautiful because we have to pay it every month, all right? But that final little piece of saying that this expression is the, the cost for X text messages is a really critical connection in your brain. And I don't want to talk too much, but all I'm trying to do is ask you to trust me a little bit. I have a sister-in-law who's a lawyer, and one of her favorite sayings is trust me. And I'm like, oh, my God, a lawyer saying trust me. Anyway, but just, you know, try to go with it and know that whatever I'm asking you to do, I'm asking you, I'm pushing you a little bit in hopes that this kind of abstract idea will start to become more familiar to you. Most of you can use the words of what these things are. It's going from the words to the expressions or, or from the expression to the words. There's a disconnect there. And I'm trying to connect the synapses in your brain. Or is that the right word for what's in your brain or is that your nervous system? Anybody do biology in here? Synapses, OK? Yeah, OK. Yeah. So you all worked really hard. Your brains need a little bit of a rest. So that's why I was talking to you, so you could just ignore me for about three minutes and give your brains a rest. OK. So all of what I've asked you to do in one through four, all that hard work will hopefully serve you over you know, our 15-minute demo that I'm about to do and then when you do your class activities. But let's start with this last one right here, OK? Your local computer store is having a terrific sale on digital cameras. After a 40% price reduction, you purchase a digital camera that costs $276. So when you do these types of problems and you're asked to find the original price of the camera, this is how I always phrase it. You have to find an equality. To solve an equation, you have to find an equality in all of that words, all of those words that they just threw at you. So in words, could someone tell me, don't worry about copying down the answers right now, OK? Don't, and the boards, what's really, you can, well, I'll leave it up there. You can take time in a few minutes. Try to stay a little focused here, because I'm not going to do much demo today. We have to find an equality. That's how you solve an equation, right? An equation is an equality. Can anybody tell me, just in words, no symbols, no algebra, the only number I probably want to see is the 276, but just can anybody tell me in everyday language, I'm going to even fill this part way out, what the $276 actually represents in words? Marcos? The amount paid for the camera after a reduction, right? So it's the reduced price. Is that is more simplified, right? It's the reduced price of the camera, right? As Marco said, it's the amount you paid after some kind of sale happened or discount. So it actually represents the reduced price of the camera, right? So this represents the amount paid for the camera after a beautiful discount. OK, you wouldn't write that, but I'm just writing it to be silly, OK? And to be ridiculous, fine. I'm ridiculous, OK. So that represents the amount paid for this camera after this reduction. So up here somewhere is some number of dollars. 
which represents the original price of the camera, right? Some number of dollars represents the original cost. So this represents the original, the amount of the original cost for a camera, right? And usually what we do is we pick some famous variable to represent that because we don't know what it is, right? But it's just some amount of money. And just to be a devil, devil's advocate, I'm going to use C instead of X. All right. So that represents, it doesn't represent the camera. This is, this is what gets math teachers like wanting to pull our hair out. C is not the camera. I don't care if it's a digital camera or a Canon with this like super long zoom lens. It has nothing to do with any kind of qualitative idea. It's a number. So when you describe it over here, use some kind of quantitative idea and use your units. Could be in euros or pesos or rubies or not rubies, rubles, right? Rubies, that would be good, huh? All right. So that's this original amount. What happened to this original amount? If it's reduced, what possible operation might come in handy here on the other side of this equal sign? What kind of mathematical operation might we be talking about? Yeah, motion? Subtraction. So we take the original cost, and I'm doing this out on all of its like long kind of, but this is what really goes on in our mind. It's original cost of the camera minus some discounted amount. Some discounted amount of dollars. And when we do that, when we subtract those two dollar signs, we get 276 when we subtract those two dollar amounts. All right. So we have defined the amount of this original cost or the original cost of the camera. We've defined that to be C. And notice what's in front of C is this hidden number one. We never put it in. But this says, hey, C represents the full price, 100%. That's what the one represents. 100% as a decimal is the number one. This is the full-blown price. What am I taking away from this? 40% of that price. So when you do, most people never do this step. I see it here. And I say, you've just put an expression, this is an expression, you've just put an expression there without telling me what this is. What does 0.04c represent, Moshe? Uh, yes, it's 4% of C in everyday words that has to do with the story that we're telling right, right now because 4% of C could be put into any story. I could be talking about interest, I could be talking about... Um, a price reduction of a house. What does 4% of C actually represent in this problem? Excuse me? Oh, it's 40%. Thank you. All right. So, you know, these mistakes are quite common, right? It's usually the other way where you make 4% uh, 4 .4 instead of this. Okay. So here's my 40% reduction. Thank you for those of you who are eagle eyes here, all right? So in words with this story, not any general story. Want to try it again, Moshe? What does that? 40% of the amount, the original amount. All right, but would you go around saying, talking to people that way? Like if you were in, a, if you were in the camera shop right now, would you say, oh, th that money that you took off from the original cost is 40% of the cost of the camera? What would you call that? How is that being used just in everyday language in this problem? Huh? It's the discount. It's the amount of your discount, right? It's the amount of the discount in dollars, right? On the original cost, on C dollars. So you see there's a lot that goes on in your mind for that very simple subtraction problem. And we know that what's on this side that we've just written, the C take away the 0 0.40 C, is actually the same exact thing as this number called 276. 
Now we have an equation. We found out what equals what. To solve this, we combine these like terms. 1c take away 0.4c is 0.6c. And from here, you're all going to be happy because you can get your answer, which is 276 divided by 0.6, which is $460. Okay? So there's a lot, a lot that you have to um, rest with today. You've done a lot of work. All right? Now, this is another picky thing. C it represents this number. When I ask you to put units on any answer in a test, don't do this. C is not $460. C is for the number 460. And again, this is um, a very, this is now we're getting into like the finer details. C is a variable. It takes the place of a number. When you write your answer, you say the original cost of the camera now you put in your unit was $460. But so much of it, we were allowed, I did this too in high school, we were allowed to just throw the units, whatever it was, on, on this part of your answer. This will always just be a number. If you have to separate it, even if you don't write the sentence, write 460 with the dollars in front of it and circle it. But don't put C equals $460. All right, so let's take a look at today's demo. Those are all the preview exercises. I took this right out of your book because it's a really nice little like exercise we can do that I think we could we can all kind of get behind. Um, the sex this section in Friday's work deals with models and applications, and most of you have called this type of content before word problems. But we're not going to call them word problems because I hate that, that phrase. Because what's it create? It creates a problem in our mind and anxiety. So I have always called word problems for many, many years story opportunities. It's your opportunity to tell me what this story is about and to be a detective and investigate the story and come up with a resolution, which we call the solution. Okay. So we've already developed quite a bit of strategies um, in the 20 minutes that you work today, 25 minutes. So let's take a look at this bar graph. You want to read this for us, um, Emily? So what are the different uh, degrees that this um, bar graph shows us? Drew, what are the different degrees here? Okay. And this is um, the source here is cited. It's the U.S. Centris, Centris, Census Bureau. Okay, Blake, want to finish it off for us? Right here, want to finish it off for us? Okay, what about in your notes? Oh, you don't have your notes. Here, take my notes. Okay, how about Marissa? You want to read this for us? And you can catch up where we are, okay? $49,000, yeah. Okay, so where do I begin? Now, where am I getting that from? Anybody know? I'm really old now. I know. Nobody knows that? Remember, anybody heard of the movie called Love Story? That's really old. It's a tearjerker. Yes? Yep. Okay. Oh, so you're thinking of your what equals what? Okay. So Moshe's thinking of his what equals what? And he knows on one side is he's going to write the number 116. And we know that the units on that is what? What's the units on 116? Thousands of dollars, right? So now we've got to figure out what goes over here. That's where your variable comes in and you need 
two variable expressions to represent two ideas, two quantities, excuse me. What are the two quantities we have to represent? And not, don't tell me the specifics, but just what are the two quantities that we're going to be adding? And I know we're adding because it says combined, right? So I know I have an addition problem. So we're going to be adding two amounts. So let's take a look at how we could go through this. And what I've done here is I've taken this problem and I've written out the steps for you. All right. So we've read the problem. And now we have to identify slash describe in words the quantity of quantities we're being asked to find. So you can find what you're being asked to find by either reading the question mark at the end or the sentence that asks you to, it says, find the average salary of Americans with each of these degrees. So which degrees are we talking about here? Bachelor's, Bachelor's and Master's. So we need a number that represents the amount of money earned with a bachelor's degree. I'm going to call it BS. Could be BA. All right. So this is how I start. This is the step you always want to skip. And unfortunately, you were allowed to skip it. And it's the most critical. Maybe not in problems you can really do that are fairly simple. But as these get more complicated, especially as you move along into 108 calculus, whether you're doing applied calculus or the um, mathematical calculus for physics, this is really critical. Okay? So that's why I always ask you to do this at step one. And the other amount that we have to represent, the, the other amount of money or salary we have to represent is what someone earns with a master's degree. All right. Now, let me state that it does not matter which of these you assign a variable to, whether you want to call the variable S or X or PQs, I don't care, or a smiley face. It doesn't matter which one you assign the variable to. However, usually the phrasing, and particularly the phrasing in that first sentence, will lend itself more easily if we always look for defining the salary that's the smaller amount. Which one of these salaries from reading that first sentence is the smaller amount? Jenny, can you tell me which one of the salaries is going to be smaller if you read that first sentence? The one that's the bachelor's degree, right? Because the master's degree has a relationship. We're discussing the master's degree as it compares to the bachelor's. So usually you always want to just call that thing the X or the S or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I'm actually doing this next thing here, okay? I'm doing these first three steps in this first box here. All right, now I've got to get, I have to have a way to represent the amount of the salary that a person earns every year if the average salary, maybe that's what I should have said here, average salary, right? The amount of the average salary in terms of this number. If I knew what this number is, then I could just do what this phrase is telling me. But right now we're keeping it variable because we don't know. Anybody want to take that on, Sam? 2x minus 4 2 x because it's going to be twice that amount. Minus 49,000. We don't have to put 49,000 because we know our units here is thousands of dollars. All right. So that's how we represent the two amounts. Now we have our what equals what. And Moshe's already given us one side of the what equals what with 116. And sometimes it's not a bad idea just to write here, this, the average salary earned with a bachelor's degree plus the average salary earned with a master's is 116. Then you can plug in your variable. So here we have x plus 2x minus 49. And from here, you're golden. Any, I know every single one of you in this class can solve this from here. You combine your like terms on the left side. You add 49 to each side. And help me here, make sure I don't make a mistake. So x equals 50, what, 3? 55. 55, thank you. 
All right, that's 55. I don't want to put anything on there. The number X is 55. Now we say what it means. And now this is where you would answer your sentence. You'd go back and you'd say the average salary of a, of a person in the United States who has a bachelor's degree is $55,000 a year, and the average salary of a person who earns a master's, well, we've got to do a little work to find that out. Two, thank you. Two times 55 minus 49 is 61 is $61,000 a year. Okay? And those two add up to 116. Okay? Yeah. Because this, these are the two amounts, uh, these represent the average um, salaries. This is the average salary, Michael, so the person who earns the BS or BA degree. And this is how we represented the average salary of the master's degree. And when we add those two together, we get the 116. Okay? Because the first phrase, Marcos, see the first phrase said that the person who earn, has a master's earns twice that of the one that earns the bachelor's. So I got to double this. But it's not exactly double, it's minus 49. Okay? Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions on this? All right. So I think we have beat the next, the next type of problem. Oh, we haven't really beat this one to death, but we did one very similar to this. Let's say we're choosing two text plans. I'm going to do this really quickly because I want you to have time to work. Plan A has a monthly fee of $20 with a charge of $0.05 cents a text. So now you know why I asked you to do number two, right? Because we can already represent the amount of money spent in Plan A. So the first thing I have to do here is I have to represent the number of text messages. Regardless of what plan I use, I'm going to let x equal the number of text messages. And I should probably, to be really accurate, say number of monthly text messages, right? The number of monthly text messages. I was just talking to Verizon last night, as a matter of fact, about my latest bill. OK. So. Plan B has a monthly fee of $5 with a charge of 10% per text. Both plans include photo and video text. For how many text messages will the cost of the two plans be the same? So right now, I just, I'm just representing the number of monthly text messages. Okay, what else do I have to represent in this problem beside the number of text messages with the letter X? Um, Doug, you want to help me out with this? Right. What about plan A and plan B? What what kind of thing are we trying to calculate for plan? Yeah, they have an equality together. So in what are we trying to find out about plan? What number of text messages allows? All right. So we're now going down to the what equals what. We're not finished up here. So Doug is saying we have some cost for plan A. Oops and some cost for plan B. And we're trying to find out when these two numbers are equal. And they're going to be equal for some number of text messages. Right? I'm going to do this simultaneously. Uh, I'm going to take out my calculator. And I'm going to do whatever we do algebraically, I'm going to do visually as well so you can see what happens. All right. So we've got to figure out some algebraic expression that represents each of these costs. So that's our next job. We've got two more equal signs here. We have to figure out the cost for in dollars of plan A. And this is the last little piece that I'm going to push you on. The cost of plan A for X text messages. Because there's going to be an X in there. And the cost in dollars for plan B for X text messages. OK, well, we already did the cost for plan A. You all have it on the boards right now. It's the expression 20 plus 0.05x. We all did that. So uh, Drew, what do we have for the cost of um, the plan B for X text messages based on the story? Five plus ten cents per message is point one x, right? 
So I'm going to put each of these expressions into my graphing calculator as an equation. Y1 is going to be 20, because that's how much I start off with, the $20 plus 0.05x, 05x, not O. And my other plan starts at $5, and then I have these increments of 10 cents for every single text message. Okay. Now, when I set these two expressions equal, I can now solve these for x, and I'm all done. So we get uh, 15, 15 on this side equals 0.05x on that side. We divide both sides by 0.05, and we get the number of text messages. So does anybody know what that comes out to be? 300. And do not put on the end of this messages or text because that's just a number. What is this going to look like if I look at the graph right now? Does anybody have a sense? I got two equations here that I'm graphing. What kind of equations are these? 20 plus 0.05x, Marcos? Yeah. Okay, so when you say one, what kind of, how would you describe the shape of that one? What kind of shape does it make when you're doing this? What kind of shape is that on the graph? What do we call it? Straight line, right. So we're going to have two straight lines, and as Marco said, this first straight line is going to have a, a, be further up on the y-intercept because it starts with a, a flat fee that's higher, but it increases at a slower rate, five cents for every text message, versus this one. And what does this 300 represent in terms of the graph? Someone, someone that I haven't heard from today, maybe. Who haven't I heard from? I think I've heard from just about everybody. Dan, do you know what the 300 represents in the graph? The number of texts. Okay, for the plan. Well, let's take, let's do a. a Zoom six and see if we can do this on. We don't really need a standard window because we're not going to have negative text. So I'm going to do zero, and x is 300. So I'm going to go out to say maybe 400, and I'm going to do every single text. I'm going to increment by one. Um, the lowest amount that my cost will be is five bucks a month. So I'm going to have my y minimum be five. I have no idea what this is going to come out to be money wise. So I'm just going to put a hundred dollars. So I've set my window up, and now I'm going to graph it. So there's one of my lines, and there's the other. Okay. So this line is what Marcos was explaining is the cost for plan A, because it starts up higher on the y-axis, and it's not as steep as this line, which starts down here at $5. It almost looks like zero. So let's get a picture of that, and we'll... We'll plug it right here so we can sort of have a visual. Oh, I always forget that I have to have my camera on first. Let's turn the camera back on. Come on, get out of there. Cut. Okay. Let's get this up and we'll get a picture of that now. Okay. Let's take a picture of this. All right. So that, each of those lines represents the cost of each text plan. Okay. We don't need to make it that big. All right. So this, this is the geometry that goes with this what equals what here. The point of equality. What do you call the point of equality here? There's a point has two variable, two pieces, right? It's the intersection point, right? And we know something about that intersection point. We know that it happens at 300 texts. What we don't know yet is what the cost is, right? So how do we find that cost? Well, we go back and put it in. 20 plus 5% times or 5 cents per text times 300 texts is going to be the same as 5 plus 0 0.10 times 300 texts. And so that's uh, $35 equals $35. So that's $35 a month. Okay. Now look. You can get that intersection point on a graphing calculator. Let me show you how you do it. You hit second trace, which has this little yellow phrase calc. And you say, I want to know where these two things intersect. Boom, boom, boom. Voila, at 300, 
Tex, $35. Okay, so this is, uh, this is where your graphing calculators can really help you out if you wanted to check real quickly, if you didn't have the answers in my math lab or in the back, or you didn't want to physically check it by doing your algebra. All right, so you're now on your own to start your class activity, and I've, I've led you through a lot of this stuff um, by giving you like little th pieces to fill in to try to help you out. I'm going to get your flags for you. Just start wherever you want. Use your flag. flag.